Hey Connections, it's good to be with you again. If you're new to Connections, let me introduce myself. I am the pastor, Stephen Kroll. I work with an amazing group of people who are dedicated to break down barriers and to build bridges to the cross. Along that line of breaking down barriers and building bridges, we've been on YouTube for well over a year now. And it has come to our attention that just a sermon is not cutting it. So what we're going to do, starting March 3rd, we're going to do a Zoom community. It'll be about 20 minutes long. There will be uh, a host that will welcome you in. Uh, and we're going to start at 7, I should have said. So prior to 7, the host will be there. And they will invite you in, introduce you to the people who are already there. At 7, we are going to uh, have a call to worship, a prayer. We're going to have a song as contemporary. May not always be a Christian song, but it'll be a contemporary song. Then the floor will be open for some communication where we can give a testimony to what God is doing in our world and or maybe a question on how you felt while the song was being sung. I'm going to give a little uh, sermonette, a, a little brief um, uh, message on what I feel that God is leading us to, that I feel is going to help you in your life. We're going to do communion afterwards, and then the Zoom meeting will come to a close. But if you want to stay on and to have conversations with others that are there, it'll be left open. So, exciting news. But what we need you to do is to mail me, email me your email address. So, you can email me at S-C-R-O-W-E-L-L -L at united.edu. Let's pray. Today, Lord, we are opening our hearts and our minds to hearing a word from you from the book of Daniel. Help us to see what you have for us today and, and how, how our lives can be altered and changed because of your word. We put this into your holy name. Amen. So the title for today is failure to bow. And that means to, to bow over or to bend over. And so the scripture is going to be from the third chapter of Daniel. It's a long chapter, so I'm going to break it down and just tell you the story of what's happening here. King Nebuchadnezzar hasn't learned from his past experiences with Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego because at one point he did realize, because of the dream, that there was a true God, the one God. But he got full of himself again, and he began to elevate the gods that he has always served and to, uh, to elevate himself to a position of power. And so Nebuchadnezzar built this huge statue of himself, and he calls all of the people everywhere from all around are to come and to give honor and glory and worship to this statue that represents the gods. And, it, and the announcement goes that when the trumpets blare, when all of the music starts up, everyone is to get down on the ground and to bow down and to give allegiance to Nebuchadnezzar, and the gods that he serves. Well, the appointed day came. They are in this flat land, and there is the statue. But right near the statue is a furnace, a, a, a place where there's fire inside, and it's designated that if you don't bow, if you don't give your allegiance to Nebuchadnezzar and, and his gods, you are to be thrown into the fire. Well, off goes the music at the appointed time, and everybody in the crowd is bowing down. Except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
Now remember, they had been put in charge of various locations within the kingdom. They're powerful people. Nebuchadnezzar knows who they are. They're probably right up towards the front. And here they are standing as the entire crowd has knelt and bowed. Oh my word, the fury of Nebuchadnezzar erupts and he calls for the guards to, to come forward because he may not have noticed because scripture does say that there was a tattletale that said, Nebuchadnezzar, look, look at, at those three. They are failing to bow. Like I said, he was furious at them. And he calls them up and he says, why are you failing to bow? And they simply say, we serve Yahweh. We serve the one and only true God and we cannot give our allegiance to your statue. Oh, well, that was the end of it. He says to, to his servants to fire up the furnace, make it seven times hotter than it's ever been before. And he has Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're bound. They can't move. It says they're fully closed. Their hat is still on. And so the guards come over and they lift them up. And as they get close to the fire, it says the fire is so hot that the guards die. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fall into the flame and into the fire because of the momentum that had already been put into motion. The guards are dead, and, and here is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Nebuchadnezzar looks in and says, didn't we throw in three? Why are there four? And he calls out to them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come over here and tell me what's happened. And they begin to explain because now their, their bonds, the, the ropes that were binding them burned off, but their clothes were completely unaffected. There was no smell of the fire on them. And they said that it was their God that saved them that day. Nebuchadnezzar had nothing more to say except that he bowed down and that he gave his allegiance to Yahweh. So what about this story? You know, we could say standing firm, like we gave the title to the first week. And if you haven't seen that, go back into YouTube and pull up the first week's video. And it's about Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego. See, in that story, they were told that they were to eat these rich foods that were against the rules on how a Jewish person should eat. And they asked for permission not to do it. So they stood firm in their belief in the policies that God had. So that's different. And, and, and because they obeyed, they were blessed. Now, there was other Jewish um, slaves that were there. Now, they ate. Now, it really wasn't that, that it was... Um, hindrance to them other than the fact that they did not receive the full blessing of what God had for them. And so Daniel Shadrach, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood firm and they were blessed. In fact, then they were put over as leaders over areas of Babylon and, and of Nebuchadnezzar's territory. But here's what's different with this story. They weren't standing up for a principle. They weren't standing up for a rule. They were standing up as a belief in who they felt was God. See, this is different. If they gave their allegiance over to the statue and to Nebuchadnezzar, they are saying they no longer follow God. They are changing from who they follow. From God to Nebuchadnezzar. And they couldn't do that. They had to stand firm. They had to hold ground. They refused to bow. They refused to take the knee. And they said, we believe in God. We believe in the one true God. And therein lies the difference. They wouldn't bend. They wouldn't break. 
And the question for us today, do we change our allegiance? Do we over time uh, find that other things in this world are more important than God? And we begin to follow those idols in our lives that how many times are are we not getting into the word? How many times are we not going to Bible study? How many times are we not attending a worship service, either online or in person? How many times do we fail to hang out with other Christian people to worship God? It's what we put first is where our allegiance is. And I'm asking you today, are you bowing to another idol? Or are you standing firm and saying, I believe in God the Father, the Creator. I believe in Jesus the Son, the one that died for my sins. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one that calls us, the one that sustains us, the one that gives us wisdom and power, the one that awakens us to our sinfulness so that we can turn our hearts to the one true God. Bow with me in praise and honor to the one true God. Heavenly Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, today we are reaffirming our our belief in you. And not only our belief, but you are Lord of our life. We will follow you to the end of the days. We will lay down our life like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did so long ago. We are willing to go into the fire for you. And as days come forward, we may not know what tomorrow holds, Lord, but we know who holds tomorrow, and that is you. We put this into your son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I will see you next week, and hopefully uh, you will want to get on board with our new Zoom uh, meetings. We're going to call them, by the way, Community Connection. And so for you to get on board with that, again, send me an email so that I can return uh, an email to you with an, a personal invite and kind of more of what we're going to do. So again, it is S-C-R-O-W-E-L-L at united.edu. Love you. See you next time.